Hello and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. I'm Jana and today I am over at the Funky Junkie Challenge blog for this week's Saturday Showcase. This week I'm going to be showing you three different techniques for you to use with your Distress Tim Holtz glazes. And we're also going to have a few projects to go along with these techniques. Now, this is going to be a two-part video. First, we're going to dive in and look at the different techniques. And then in the second part, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few projects. All right, go ahead and pause to find out exactly which supplies I'm going to be using. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. For our first Distress Embossing Glaze technique, we're going to be looking at Distress Embossing Glaze Resist. And to start off, we're going to be using some of the Ranger Tim Holtz Multimedia cardstock. Now, before we start embossing, I'm going to be just giving this a quick swipe with the anti-static pouch. I have found that I've got really thick fingerprints, and if I so much as touch the card, I'm going to leave some grease behind. So I like to start off with a clean surface. I am going to be using this butterfly from the stamp set CMS058 Fairy Tale Frenzy. So we're just going to grab some Distress Embossing ink and ink up this beautiful butterfly. And we're going to put that over here. And I'm going to make three stamps of the butterfly. And one more. Good. Now that I have the butterflies all nicely stamped, it's time to go in with our Distress Embossing Glaze. And the colors we're going to be using are Broken China, Salvaged Patina, and a dash of Kitsch Flamingo. So for this, I'm going to be using my fingers to add little bits of Distress Glaze over these butterfly images. You could use a spoon, but for small images like these, I find that my fingers work a lot better. Now let's just turn this sideways so we can see our colors and the images. Okay, so we'll just go in get a pinch of the color and gently sprinkle it on. Okay, I'm liking that. It's pretty cool. And we'll go back, get a little bit of salvage patina going. So we're gonna end up with a bit of a confetti mix here, but not a big deal. We're using very small amounts of the powder, so we will just tap that into the trash later. If we wanted a rainbow mix, then this would be something to save. But I find that the color gets way too muddy if you attempt to save these confetti mixes. All right, now for a touch of Kitsch Flamingo. I think I want just a little bit more salvage patina. Then we'll pick up this image and tap it. And check our coverage. All right, just a little bit more broken china. Okay, so we'll just move these off to the side. I'm gonna pick this up. Yep, we got good coverage. That looks really good. So I'm just gonna quickly tap this off into the trash. And there we go, ooh, that is really pretty. Now I've got a couple of little dust flakes going on here. Not a big deal. Just brush those off. I want to have these images as clean as possible. All right, now let's get out the embossing gun and we'll put this part on mute and fast forward. Okay, let's take a closer look at these. Ooh, that is wonderful. 
we've got some of the broken china melting into the salvage patina and then fading out into the kitsch flamingo. These look great. Okay, let's add one more layer to this and then we'll get to the resist part of this technique. So the next thing that I wanted to add were some floral outlines. I absolutely love the stamp set. This is probably one of my all-time favorites. So this is Floral Outlines CMS 430. And we're going to carefully ink this up using the Distress Embossing Ink. Just smush that down. Okay, and we're going to put these flowers into the background. And if it goes slightly onto the butterfly, not a big deal. I can easily wipe that off. So let's just center this up and we will slip this in. Hmm. Ooh, that looks perfect. Okay, I'll stamp that there. And I'm going to ink this up again. Okay, let's add a few more little stamps into the edges of this card. So I'll just turn this on the side, stamp there. I want to do something over here. And I just need to add a little bit more ink and I want to do a little stamp there. Okay. Mm. Yep, if I turn that just like that, perfect. Okay, now let's add our Distress Embossing Glazes. So for this section, I'm going to be using Salvage Patina and Vintage Photo. Okay, I'll start with the Vintage Photo and just sprinkle that on here and there. And then we'll come back in with Salvage Patina. Ooh, this is going to be a really good color combination. Hmm, I might want to go in with a bit more brown. Let's see. Yep, definitely going to want a bit more brown. Okay. I think that is good. Now we'll just quickly tap that and see how the coverage is. Hmm. It looks like I might have missed a couple of spots. teeny spot over here. Yep. That looks good. Now I'm just going to take the brush and we're going to gently brush off a couple of specks. Good. Brush a little bit off this butterfly. Perfect. Okay. Oh, just seeing a little corner I missed over here. There. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're going to heat emboss this and then move on to the next step. Ooh, the embossing on this went beautifully. So we now have the butterflies as one of our main focal points and then we have these beautiful flowers in the backdrop. So. Next, in order to complete the resist part of this technique, I'm going to be grabbing a few distress sprays. 
For Distress Spray Stains, I'm going to be using Distress Oxide Hickory Smoke and Distress Spray Stain Speckled Egg. To start with, I'm going to be misting our paper with some water from the Distress Sprayer. Okay, we've got the water. Now I want to start with the spray stain. Ooh, that is providing a lovely contrast. And now in with a dash of the oxide. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more water to get this to move. And then we'll dry this off. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this section on fast forward. Okay, first layer done. I'm going to quickly mop up this overspill. Now this is still damp. That is totally okay. We didn't need to make this completely dry. Now I want to add in a little bit more of the speckled egg for our second layer. Okay, that should be good. And I want to add a few drops of water to move this around. I want to get some of the oxide going. All right, let's dry this off. Okay, and the last thing to do is to dab off some of the little puddles. There's just a few, but you can easily go in there with a cloth and dab them up. Okay. Well, I am very pleased with the way this turned out. This looks great. We've got the contrasts of the light colors with some of the warm colors and we've got this pretty cool vintagey look. So this is the resist part for this technique. We've used embossing glaze to stamp with, and then we added in some distressed spray stains and oxide to create a background. Okay, moving on to our second technique. For the second technique, we are going to want some of the distress white heavy stock, and we're going to also be wanting the distress dabber. So I always keep the dabber stored upside down like this because it takes a while for the Distress ink to move from point A to point B. But with this, we're just going to simply scribble it onto our paper. Now remember with the Distress Dabber, we don't want to squeeze too much, otherwise the top part could potentially pop off and that would be a very big mess. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving that around. All right, let's see how the coverage is. Okay, you can definitely see the shine on the paper. So that is good, okay. Now I'm going to grab some scrap paper and stick it under this sheet, and then we will start adding some of our Distress Powders. For the Distress Powders, I'm going to be using Rustic Wilderness, Peeled Paint, and a touch of Vintage Photo. So this time I'm going to be coating an entire piece of paper with some Distress Embossing Glazes. And after we've embossed these, then we're going to die cut. Okay, so I'm going to start with the brown, since that's the color I'm probably going to use the least of. Just want to make sure I've got some brown in some strategic locations. Okay, then we'll go in with the peel of paint. I'm definitely going to be using a lot of peel of paint, so I want to make sure that's sprinkled on there very generously. Mm, a bit more, I think. Okay, that looks good. And now in with a dash of Rustic Wilderness. All right, 
bit more rustic wilderness. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to pick this up and we're going to just kind of tap and move it around. Probably need to go back in and do a second layer. Yep, definitely a second layer. Not a big deal. Pretty easy to do. Get that brown in there. Sprinkle that around. A hmm. bit more peeled paint. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. I'll just tap that. Okay, it's a little splotchy in places, but this is not a bad thing because any of those extra splotches, I'm going to be filling in with some Distress Crayon. Now, there is a technique where you could flick the back of this paper and get even more splotches, but I want my splotches to be fairly subtle. So I'm just going with wherever the Distress embossing ink just didn't happen to stick. Okay, let's move these to the side, get rid of the confetti mix. And let's emboss. As we can see, when we embossed, we definitely lost some of the powder. Not ideal, but we can easily go back in with some Distress Crayon and cover up these gaps. I'm going to show you a technique a little bit later for some pre-cut die pieces and how you can get a more smooth coverage with the Distress Embossing Glaze. But for the effect that I'm going with right now, this kind of works to our advantage. So I'm now going to grab some of the Distress Metallic Pearlescent Crayons because we have a couple of greens in here that are going to work really nicely with these gaps. I'm going to be using Bubbling Cauldron and Tree Lot. I'm going to start with Bubbling Cauldron and just scribble a bit of that down in places. Okay, and then I'm going to go in with Tree Lot. Okay. That looks good. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water off to the side to dip my fingers in, and we're going to smudge this in. Ooh, I'm kind of liking that. That's neat. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Now I'm just going to wipe the extra off with a slightly damp corner of this towel. Ooh, yep, there we go. Now I'm getting some of the brown back. This is going to work quite nicely for what I have in mind. All right. Now that we have our sheet finished, you can see where the embossing glaze is, and you can also see the areas where I added the Distress Crayon. And this gives us a really interesting texture, and this is going to work perfectly for us because we're going to be using the die set prehistoric and dinosaurs have fantastically scaly skin and that should give us just the effect that we are wanting. Hmm, I think we're going to create the stegosaurus. So I'm going to just pop that die out. There we go. We'll trim this down a little bit and then we're going to die cut through the layer of embossing glaze. Okay, so I'm going to line this up, make sure that we get some of the brown spots. There we go. Hmm. Maybe this side will look better. Yep, I like this side better. Oh, perfect. All right, so I'm just going to trim this, and then we're going to run this through the sidekick. For scissors, I'm using the Tonic Tim Holtz Mini Snips. I love these for when I need to do quick trimming. All right, let's get our sidekick. So we'll just quickly place that down here. That should fit. Okay, make our sandwich.
Okay. And we'll just back the camera out just a little bit. And bring the slide kicking. Okay. And we'll just quickly run this through. Let's see how it cut. That looks pretty good. So we'll just carefully peel that off. Yeah, this cut really nicely. There's the main part of the dinosaur. There's a leg. One of the spikes. And the head. Okay. And we'll just pop out the rest of the pieces. I've got another leg over here. And I'll try to pop out the rest of the spikes in order so that I can easily attach these. There we go. We have all the pieces to our dinosaur. So let's go ahead and put this on fast forward while I assemble this cute little stegosaurus. And there we go. Here is our completed Stegosaurus. And we've got the subtlety of the Distress Crayon mixed with some Distress Glaze. Okay, let's head on to our next technique. Now we're going to take a look at our third technique. And for this, I'm going to be bringing in a blast from the past. This is the Ranger Melting Pot. And I found this is a great way to cover large spaces with a distress glaze, and it gives us a different sort of look. So to do this, I have die cut some pieces for one of the big styes. This is the Tim Holtz filament light bulb. And we're going to use the melting pot to add some distress glaze to this. Now for the next part, you can either coat this with distress embossing ink first, or you can place this into the melting pot as is. I'm going to go with as is and not use the distress ink for now. So we're just gonna put that in here. And then I'm going to lay down a thin layer of some ultra thick. Now this isn't really necessary, but I found that using the ultra thick first allows me to stretch my glazes a bit further. So we're just going to tap on a bit of the ultra thick and I am using a mini spoon just to make this easier. You could definitely go in with your fingers. And I'm going to grab one of my die picks and just move this around to make sure that everything is melting. Now let's zoom in for a closer look. Okay, so I'm just going to tilt this and just make sure that the ultra thick is melting and then we will go in and start adding some of the glaze. One of the nice things about using the melting pot, it doesn't take long for embossing powders to melt. Now, for the temperature on the melting pot, I have pushed this up all the way to the setting that says UTEE, -E, and I believe that is the ultra thick setting. As we can see here, the little crystals are melting, and this is going to give me a good foundation to drop some more embossing powders into. But right now, I want to add a little bit more ultra thick and try to get in and around the edges that I missed earlier. So with the spoon, I'm just going to tap that in and let it melt. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm liking the coverage on that. And we'll just give that a moment to continue to melt. There we go. And then I'm going to go in with some of the embossing glaze. So the first color of embossing glaze that I'm going to be using is fossilized amber. And this will make a great foundation for the light. 
So I'll just take a small scoop. Probably not going to use all of that. And we're just going to sprinkle that on to the light bulb. Now, if some of the embossing powder goes into the tray, not a big deal. This is very easy to clean. And I will show you how I clean the tray at the end of this technique portion. Okay. Got good coverage. I want to shake this in over the edges. That looks good. And it's getting nice and melty pretty fast. So I'll just keep sprinkling that, trying to get all the edges. Okay. Looks like I can scrape just a little bit of that over. Good. And I'm just going to push that corner down so that this section melts as well. There we go. Looks like I've got a few spots left and I'll have to go back in with a little bit more powder, but not a big deal. This stuff melts pretty quickly, so it's really easy to manipulate. There. I'm just going to hold that. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm just going to try to spread that out a little bit more. And I'm going to go back in with a little bit more fossilized amber and try to get those little corners I missed. Okay. Just a little bit down here. Good. Now, while that is melting, I want to add just a touch of sparkle to this. Now, I'm going to be integrating some of the Ranger holographic embossing powder. I want just a little bit of added sparkle. So, I'll take a small scoop of that and sprinkle that over the top. This will give us a nice little shimmer to add to that light bulb. Ooh, that is super sparkly. Very cool. Okay, let's give that a moment to melt. And I'm just going to turn this around a little bit so that that one corner down here can get melty. Let's press that down. Let's see if I can zoom in and get, catch more of that melty action. Yep, there we go. There, you can see it melting pretty quickly now. That is just really cool. Once this is all melted, we'll go ahead and glaze the rest of our pieces. Okay, let's rotate this and I will get the other side all nice and melty. Okay, spinning that around, and we'll get this side. That shouldn't take too long. Oh, there it goes. Very cool. All right, I'm now going to lift this out of the tray. And we'll just back the camera up for a moment. So this is hot but the edges should be cool enough for me to touch. So I'm just going to lift this up with the die pick. Gently grab the edges and we'll set this aside. Okay, next piece. So we've got the little base of the light bulb here and we're going to start with some weathered wood. And then I will add in a sprinkling of Ranger Silver embossing powder. So just quickly sprinkle that. This one should be pretty quick since it's a very small piece. Okay. And I'll just scoot that down where I know the heat is. I have found for the melting pot that we get the most heat around this area of the melting pan. 
And that's nice and melty. Let's go in with a dash of silver. A little bit too much silver. I'll need to go back in with some more weathered wood. Not a problem. And I will just bring the camera down so that we can see a close-up. There we go. All right, a little bit more weathered wood. That should be easy enough to slip right in. And there we go. Perfect. All right, let's get this piece out. And again, I'm just going to go in with the die pick. You definitely could use the squeezers for this as well. Okay. There, and we'll put that aside. Good. All right, next. Let's work on this filament. And that one I think I'm just going to do completely silver. So I'll get some Ranger embossing powder and just sprinkle it right on. Again, this is a fairly small piece, so it shouldn't take long for this to melt on. Good, so I'm just gonna poke that with a die pick a moment and then we'll be able to lift it out. There, nice and melty. Okay, now I'll just lift this with the die pick. Whoops. And we'll just lift that out of the way. Good. One last piece. And this one, we're going to make, make it nice and easy and color this one black. So I'll just grab some of the Ranger Super Fine Black Detail Powder and... We will finish up this section. All right, let's just sprinkle that on. Missed just a couple of little spots, but we can go back and get those. Okay, that should melt pretty quickly. Okay. And I'll just tap that with the die pick. Oh, nice and melty. And we have a little bit of silver in there. That is actually a good thing, and that looks pretty awesome. So... We're just going to carefully lift this out and set it aside. Okay, now for the cleanup. This part is unbelievably easy. While the machine is still on, I'm just going to take some paper towel and I'm going to quickly wipe out this container. Since it's all nice and melty, it just comes up just like that. There, 
all nice and clean and ready for the next time I want to do some melting. Here is the finished filament light bulb. This wraps up part one of embossing glaze techniques. Join me over in part two as we use these elements to create a few projects. So until then, happy crafting!